I am Kat Khan and I am here with Jersey Drozd. He's one of the artists in Artist Alley at the ALA Annual Conference in Anaheim, California here in June of 2012. Pleasure to be here. And I just have a few questions for you, Jersey. Sure. Uh, first of all, how did you get your start in comics? I was in college. I was an undergrad and I was studying mythology, folklore, and graphic design. And uh, But I was simultaneously submitting samples uh, to comics companies at that time. And it, it just so happened that a company named Antarctic Press uh, took the bait bit <laughs> and I started doing some comics for them and uh, didn't, didn't wind up finishing college because I was working in the industry at that point. Uh, and I did that for a few years until uh, I decided that, you know, I got a lot of my own ideas that I don't feel I have room to do here, so I'm going to start doing my own self-publishing. Uh, and in the, the weird thing is, is I know that in, in the book world, uh, self-publishing isn't always the most glamorous thing in the entire world, but in the comics world, it often is a sign of uh, machismo. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's a tough thing to do, is to try to do it all yourself. So uh, it, it's always surprising to me when I get it, cross that line from the traditional comics industry to the book industry to find out how people react to the word self-publishing. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I self-published for yeah. many years and then uh, I did, did web comics and eventually started getting some gigs uh, from companies like Glencoe McGraw Hill and other book publishers and nonprofit organizations doing educational comics uh, and all sorts of different comics for kids. Okay, great. Now you got um, a book there. You've got yes, show yes, that this one. <laughs> the front. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, the front rebirth is one of my babies. Uh, this is one of those personal projects I was just talking about that I wanted to self-publish. Uh, and it's based on a lot of ideas that I was kicking around when I was a kid. Uh, a lot of these characters were characters I created when I was a kid. Uh, and I, I did them as a, I did the story originally as a series of mini comics back in the 90s. They were really terrible. Uh, and so I decided in uh, 2000, 2001 to rejigger the entire thing and uh, do it as a webcomic and serialize it on the web and collect it as a, as a graphic novel. Uh, and the story is essentially about, it's, it's the typical coming of age story. It's a young boy who feels very alone and special and uh, he uh, suddenly finds out that he's even more alone and special than he ever thought because there's this ancient bad guy who's coming to kill him and he's surrounded by all these different magical characters, monsters and mercenaries and uh, men who can turn into metal and uh, they're there to protect him from the ancient bad guy but ultimately in the zero hour the magical people can only take you so far and you, my poor young man, have to step forward and do the grown-up thing. As my friend Dan Mishkin, a comic book writer, once said, he said that superhero stories are dress rehearsal for adulthood. And I take that lesson, or that, that idea, very much to heart when I'm designing stories for young people. Is that it is about lasers and monsters and explosions and debris, lots of debris. I love drawing debris. <laughs> but it's really about what a young person has to deal with in becoming a self-responsible adult. Okay, great. Now, how have libraries affected you? Have you used libraries a lot? Have you gotten work into the libraries? Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of work with uh, libraries in the Southeast Michigan area, particularly the Ann Arbor District Library. I also served as the artist in residence for the Chelsea District Library mm. last year. Uh, so not only do I have I worked with them to get my books into those places, but I work with them to create comics programming, teaching kids uh, how to make comics, getting kids excited about the comics medium by ha getting them engaged with the actual making of comics. So I uh, started out six years ago just doing a workshop here and there, a one-off thing, let's make a mini comic together, and the interest blossomed to this point where every year I'm doing two six-week courses at the Ann Arbor District Library. Every month we do a free uh, an open session called the Comics Artist Forum where uh, it's just open to the public, just come in and we have a guest speaker talk for 20 minutes about some kind of aspect of making comics, like whether it's drawing digitally or pre-press or self-promotion. And then it's just a general uh, social hour for people to meet other cartoonists in the area. Uh, and that, that extended out to us doing, uh, I became the co-organizer of an event called Kids Read Comics, uh -huh. uh, where every year we hold a free two-day event at the library. It's going to be at the Ann Arbor District Library this July 7th and 8th, uh, 2012. And a free two-day event where we bring in 60 artists from around the world to table and sell their books, but then they also lead hands-on workshops for kids, teens, and adults all weekend long. So in, by partnering with libraries as an author, I wound up helping to create a scene in my area where young people can get access to educational content that they just can't find anyplace else. You're not going to find this at, uh, you know, a, a state university. Not yet. It's getting better, but but uh, it's it's providing really specialized educational opportunities uh, with 
working people in that industry and absolutely, for, well, not free, taxpayer uh, uh, supported, right? Yeah. So. Oh, okay, great. Now, if, is there any comic out there written by somebody else other than you <laughs> <laughs> that you would recommend? For a, a reader, a young reader, for example. A young reader. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to cheat and maybe lump two together. Uh, if you're a boy, well, if you're a boy or a girl, actually, and if you like action adventure, like Indiana Jones movies, there is a great, great webcomic, and it's also in print. It's called Delilah Dirk. It's by Tony Cliff. It's at Deliladirk.com. There's a million things to love about this book. One, the art is gorgeous. Two, it is rip-roaring Indiana Jones-style adventure, uh, you know, hopping all over exotic locations and lots of crazy sword fights and wonderful characterization. Uh, but three, and possibly most important, is uh, the hero, Delilah, is a really good example of what a strong female character mm. can and should be. Uh, she's not overly sexualized, although she's beautiful in her way. And uh, she, she doesn't have a troubled past. She's just like, like Indiana Jones. He, he, he doesn't have a troubled past and he's not overly sexualized. He's just a cool person that you want to be more like. And that's what Delilah Dirk is for me. Tony Cliff, DelilahDirk.com, fantastic comic. Uh, and the other one that I recommend if you're like, if you're not an action adventure fan, is I just finished the uh, advanced reader copy of Raina Telgemeier's drama. Mm. Yes. Whew. Now, Raina Telgemeier, as we know, many of us know, uh, wrote the award-winning uh, memoir, Smile. And drama is not a sequel to Smile. It is a separate story. It's a fictional story, but Raina's stuff has a more like uh, down-to-earth, real-life kind of feel to it. And uh, after reading that book, I am convinced, I am absolutely certain, this is going to be one of the most talked-about graphic novels in 2012 and 2013. It is a masterwork of comic storytelling. It is a sweet and earnest story with a really awesome twist. And Raina Telgemeier does this amazing kind of ninja trick about addressing some issues that are being hotly debated right now in the world, but she does it in a way that doesn't feel like it's kind of being didactic or prescriptive about it. It's just, it's enough to get kids talking, which I think is really, really great. So it's a fantastic book, and I was I was riveted by it. Absolutely goosebumps. Yeah, I just got my copy, so I'm looking forward to reading that oh, one, it's so too. Good. It's so good. Oh, yeah. Now, what one piece of advice would you give Mm. to someone who comes up to you and says, you know, I think I would really like to create some comics. Uh, the, the, one of the, the number one things I hear from people is, is that, uh, and this is totally just my opinion, but they say, uh, oh, I wish I had talent like that. I personally don't believe in the concept of talent all that much. I would change that word to interest. Uh, I don't think that I'm a necessarily very talented person, but I'm very, very interested. I was willing to put in the hours to learn to be as good as I am. Uh, it didn't come easy. I don't think anything worth doing comes easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you put in your 100,000 hours or whatever, then you're going to get good at it. And the only way you're going to put in that 100,000 hours is by being really, really interested. So my advice would be is like, yeah, comics are an awesome medium to play in. And, I, and if all you want to do is just make some fun, goofy mini comics just for the pure pleasure of doing it, that's that's terrific, and I, I'm a big, big fan of that idea. Uh, but if you want to do it professionally, if you want to take it to the next level and make some graphic novels, then you better care about it a lot because you're going to be giving up friendships, you're going to be giving up social time, you're going to be giving up all sorts of things in your life in order to make time because every one of these pages took anywhere between, you know, six to 20 hours yeah. to illustrate. So that's a lot of a commitment. It's a lot of commitment to something, and so I would say that don't think about a talent. Just think about do I have the interest to push myself mm -hmm. that hard? And then anything is really possible. You know, there's lots and lots of examples of people who've shown that. Okay, great. Now the the tough question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What would you like libraries to do for comics that you haven't seen them do yet? Ooh. Gosh, I, I'm, I'm so optimistic about the future right now uh, because of things, that what, like, things like what the Ann Arbor District Library has been doing with their comics collections and with their comics programming and events. I'd love to see more libraries host more comics events. And mm -hmm. cartoonists are easier to find than you might think. Uh, it's just as simple as going on Twitter and using a hashtag comics and your town's name with another hashtag or your library's uh, district name in the hashtag. Uh, or even scraping enough money together to get a, uh, a more well-known cartoonist to make a trip to your library and then they're going to tweet about it and talk about it and then other cartoonists will become more aware of it. Uh, I would love to see more libraries jumping on this idea of the library as the uh, social center. 
and uh, reaching out to cartoonists to bring them in to create more comics events for kids, which will get them availing themselves of the collection more. It uh, utilizes uh, an untapped resource in the local cartoonist, and it uh, further justifies taxpayer dollars to keep your library operating when you say, we have 300 kids come this summer for all these different awesome comics mm -hmm. events. And we have this wonderful experience where a young author, or young, a, you know, a beginning author, a little kid, gets to draw alongside of a professional. That's a life-changing experience that is, really, you can't put a price on that. Right. Uh, and that's only available through places like public libraries, because if you go to a community college, or you go to a private school, or you go to even like a, an art center, there's a fee associated with that. When you provide uh, a non-fee, open access kind of experience like that for kids, it's big stuff. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. What was that? <laughs>